All right, guys, welcome back to Task Force Off-Road. If you don't know who I am, my name is George, and we have another good one for you today. And it's in the Jeep Rebuild series, but the first part of this is going to be more practice welding. Uh, I did a good bit off camera. I'm going to show you guys those welds, and they're starting to come out, I'm not going to say good, but for being a complete and utter amateur, not bad. And doing the job is probably a good way to describe it. Uh, I have a friend who just gave me a bunch of pointers, so I want to practice them out. And I've been just dragging, so I want to try weaving it a little bit as well. And we're just going to see how it, it comes out. So that's what I'm doing right this second. And tomorrow, which will be part of this video subsequently, I should be learning how to paint. Um, I have to call and make sure that we can get the paint mixed. Because it's not a VIN number paint. So that's going to be a little interesting. But nonetheless, tomorrow we should be painting. Um, so yeah, stay tuned guys, it's gonna be a good one. Roll the intro. All right guys, so this is some decently thin metal. I have some 3 16 over there as well that I'm gonna be practicing on as well before I start putting welds on the actual project. But uh, I wanted to start small and work away, so I'm just doing a little T-joint. I already tacked it in on this side and got a good little bead going, so. We're just going to give this a shot. Uh, yeah, let's check it out. Some of the better welds. So if you can tell, you got a good one right along here. I hope this isn't too dark. I'm gonna have to refilm this portion. And we have another good one right here. So they're getting better. And then I also did weld this nut there. That's better practice around what I'll be doing. So it's not didn't come out too too shabby. So that's, that's good. Now. I'm going to try and uh, cut up some of that 3 16 and practice that. Okay guys, so if you can see that first weld there all the way on your left, that's probably the best looking one I got today. And it's, it's not terrible. The other two aren't too good. The one all the way on the right was my first attempt on this uh, 3 16 and I completely <laughs> missed the, the joint. So that didn't do too much. The one right behind that in the center, uh, not, not that good of a weld, but that far left one was my second attempt, I believe, and that, that's a good, or not a good, but it's a, it's a that'll work weld. It's pretty decent. It's got, I don't know about penetration wise, but that would, uh, that's pretty much what I need to go for when I'm welding that. So I'm going to get some more practice on this, but I'm going to go order some paint and I actually have to go to a family party. So that's going to be all for today, but I'm going to, we're going to get some more into this. So don't worry, stay tuned. Oh, all right guys. So I called the shop to be mixing the paint. 
and unfortunately they're not gonna have anyone to mix the paint until after Christmas and this sucks because it's a 50 degree day today and I, I could be painting and I wouldn't have as much issue um, either way I could be painting right now and I could have better ventilation and wouldn't be freezing and it would just be it would work a lot better but I I can't so I guess I'm just gonna do a lot of prep work in the garage so it's gonna be kind of a boring video for you guys hate to break it to you I might do a little more welding um, but besides that it's just getting stuff ready so you can get the final final assembly done this week my fenders should be in and I need to talk to the body shop about getting the Jeep itself in and see if he wants me to like put the bumper and stuff back on or leave it like it is bumperless because if he doesn't mind if I put everything back on I can do things and get stuff ready for you guys but if he would prefer it stripped down then it's gonna stay stripped down you know what I mean so we're we're, we're seeing how it goes guys just bear with me it might take a little longer than I hope but sometimes there's nothing we can do okay guys so the fenders are finally in the other ones in inside this is so we have a bunch of the bracketry that holds like the lights and stuff I'm not sure what's gonna get seen uh, I know these are gonna get seen however I might not be using these I might keep the factory ones so I think I'm gonna color match these and have the factory ones stay the black that way I can see like the difference um, but I think I'm just gonna by default and be safe paint literally everything here so we're it's paint prep day finally so I know last time I checked in with you guys I was doing a little bit more welding so I practiced that a little bit um, I used my new air gun not my new air gun I used my new pneumatic gun my impact to get that other stud all the way through so I solved that problem I still need to weld one of the bolts but I should be able to get the other one in with the pneumatic so that's that's good there the tire carrier should be fixed in the next day or so um, right now paint is the new project so what I did off camera is I went to AutoZone, or not AutoZone, I went to Advanced Auto Parts and I got them to mix me up some paint. So I have a trim black for my inner fender liners. I have, excuse me, I have a color match and a clear and a primer for the fenders. And I also have a primer for the, for the inner fender liners as well. So that's gonna get all painted up today. I'm doing paint in the inner fender liners kind of as a practice. Uh, I spent a good bit of money in paint. I spent about 300 bucks in paint. So, but I want to do the inner fender liners before I touch this with the actual, actual color. Because realistically, those will get beat up anyways. I don't necessarily care. But I want to get that practice done on a part beforehand before I go and paint the fenders. So I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna bring the other fender out, but I am gonna start sanding all this down with a 60 grit. I want to get it scuffed up nice and good. Part of this is definitely already scuffed up. From like a grinder but then there's definitely parts that aren't that are still just rolled steel so yeah we're gonna we're gonna get to paint prep that's today's goal so hopefully i can start painting today as well but i'm just taking it step by step right now doing everything really slowly and methodically and i don't want to mess anything up because i only got one shot at this so yeah let's do it stay tuned To get off that darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too When you want to get off that darkest Alright, bad news guys, so you can see this little dimple right here well that's gonna be seen when it's on the Jeep so your boy now has to go out and buy some body filler to fill that guy in I have no idea how to use that so it's gonna be a learning experience uh, yeah I'm not excited kind of petrified I've been kind of petrified of this whole painting process but that uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna run to the store and go get some body filler and probably watch a lot of YouTube videos on using body filler on bare metal. And uh, yeah, stay, stay tuned guys. Probably gonna do that in this episode. Finish sanding these and the fenders and this, the inner fenders in this episode. Cut this episode there. Um, I might continue working tonight, but the episode will be done and I'll start the new episode today as well probably. So let's, I'm gonna go buy the body filler and we're gonna try and get this started. Okay, so I hit that problem spot with 80. And now I have to learn how to use Bondo. So this is gonna be interesting. Dear Bondo, don't make this so hard to take off that it pretty much ripped my fingernail off because that was, uh, that wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. All right, I'm gonna hit that with wax and grease remover in the area I'm applying this. That way there's no contaminations under the surface. I'm gonna read the directions. seen a generate unboxing before and they put their parts or at least the inner fenders with this film on it to protect it in shipping so the brushed aluminum doesn't get scratched like it can on the back side so that's really interesting so that way you get a, a good product this stuff is a pain in the butt to take off so I'm gonna time lapse it for you real fast so you can see how much of a pain this is <laughs> So that one took about five minutes. The first one took probably about eight. Um, yeah, it was a pain in the ass, but more paint prep. Let's go. I live inside my own world of make believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush Guys, that is it for today's episode. Tomorrow we start painting. Uh, hopefully get this up tonight. Like, share, comment, subscribe to all the typical YouTube jazz. I appreciate it when you guys do that. It helps out huge. So I'm kind of happy with the way the Bondo came out. I learned that new skill today, or at least started to learn that new skill today. Got most of the prep work done for painting. Everything is sanded. Everything is wax and grease removed. I'll probably wax and grease remove it again tomorrow and then tack cloth it before I start actually painting. Um, other than that, I'm going to clean the garage up again real fast tomorrow and we're hopefully going to start spraying some paint and we're going to see how that goes, starting with primer and then Genrite inner fender liners are getting black and the other stuff's getting color match. So stay tuned guys. Tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be a lot of learning for me. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one. But it's too late now. I remember you. And how careless we be. Yeah. All day and all night 